In this video, we're going to talk about radicals with different indices. So first, let's start off with a little vocabulary. Here we have the components of a radical expression. And we have the index, which is this little number written up here, just to the upper left of the radical sign. And then we have what's underneath the radical, which is called the radicand. Now, I'm going to assume that most of you have had some experience with square roots. Okay, So we have a square root of a number like 25, let's say. You guys know that's 5, or the square root of 9 is 3. Now, in this case, the index is not written. When we don't write an index, it's assumed to be 2. And what that question is asking, when you see a problem like the square root of 25, it's asking you a question. It's asking you the question, what squared is 25? What squared is 25? That's what it's asking you. When I first teach this, I, I tell my students, uh, you know, what squared is 25? Like, actually say that to yourself. What squared is 25? Now, when we talk about the principal square root, we're talking about just the positive value, right? Of course, negative 5 squared is also 25. But usually, in this situation, when we don't have an equal sign, we just have an expression, we're just going to do the positive value. Now, if we had something like x squared equals 25, and we took the square root of both sides, then we need to consider both the positive and negative values. But what I want to talk about in this video is different indices. Okay, so let's assume that we're pretty good at square roots. But what if I have a different number there where that, um, where that n is? What if the index is 3? Okay, so let's say I have this expression, and I have a 3 where the index is. So what is this asking you? That's what you need to ask yourself. What is this asking me? This is asking me what cubed is 8. All right, a square root asks you what number squared is 8. This is asking you, another way you could rewrite this to yourself is whatever this answer is right here, whatever this goes in, whatever number goes in this box, cubed should give me 8. Okay, what cubed is 8? And hopefully you're coming up with 2. All right, 2 cubed is 8, so the cubed root of 8 is 2. Now, just like when you learned square roots, you had to ask yourself, what are the perfect squares? Right? You started listing off the perfect squares and, and becoming very aware of those when you're working with square roots. Well, 1 works too. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, etc. You need to do a similar thing with cubes. You, you should, you know, learn the first few perfect cubes. 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. Now my thing's being a little slow. There we go. 4 cubed is 64. 5 cubed is 125. It's pretty good to know those. Um, if you can do a few more, that's fine. And then, you know, stuff like 10 cubed is 1,000. Just kind of being aware of those, right? 20 cubed would be 8,000. You could learn some more cubes based on these right here. But you got to know those so you can deal with a problem. You know, for example, let's say you're given the problem, the cubed root of 64. It's nice to notice, oh, that's a perfect cube. It's nice to have that in your arsenal. Now, there's something a little bit different with cubed roots than square roots that we need to talk about. Let's say I'm looking at the cubed root of negative 64, and I'm trying to figure out what is that number. Well, now this is asking me what cubed is negative 64. We're so used to dealing with square roots and saying that you can't have a negative under a square root. But with a cubed root, you can, because negative 4 to the third power would give you negative 64. So cubed roots, you can have a negative um, as your radicand. So that's an important thing to think about. All right, let's expand this. What if I have a fourth root of something? Say I have the fourth root of 16. What is that? Well, whatever goes in this box to the fourth power has to be 16. And the answer to that is 2. 2 to the fourth power is 16. How do I know that? Well, because I've done a million of these. 
But what you have to do, just like we did over here with the perfect cubes and the perfect squares, you really should kind of know the first few perfect fourth power um, answers. And there's really, you know, once once you do a few, they get big fast. So usually you don't see them too much in, oops, I want fourth power things. You don't see them too much in textbooky type problems because, um, as you'll see, once we do the first few, they get pretty big. Let's see, 3 to the 4th power is 81. I think 4 to the 4th power is 256. And then it gets pretty big after that. Okay? That's oh, being a little glitchy today. There we go. So that's all the indice means. All right, so let's go back um, and just put this together. If you've got something like this, think about what this is asking you. Whatever this answer is right here, whatever your answer is to the nth power has to equal what's underneath there, whatever that, and that can be all kinds of different indices. It can even be a, a decimal indice, right? Because we can have decimals and, and fractions here. You don't see that very often, but, but it could be. Now, an important thing to also know how to do is to how to do this on your calculator. So let's take a look at how you would do that on the uh, TI-84. Let's say we wanted to do um, the fourth root of negative. No, we can't do fourth root of a negative. Well, that would give us an error, right? We have only odd indices we can do with the negative. So let's do the fourth root of 16 just to show how to punch those in. All right, so what you want to do on this calculator, you have to put the 4 in first. Put your index in first, and then math, and then come down here to option 5. Notice option 4 is cubed root, so that's got a built in, and this one's the xth root, so you got to put in your index first. And then you hit this. Okay, now notice how it put the little 4 that we put in there up in the index spot, and then we put that in, and boom, we have our answer. All right, so we could do the um, cubed root. If we want to do cubed root, we can go math, go down here and just choose option four or hit four. And then we could put in negative 64 because we can do the cubed root of a negative, right? If we try to do, um, let's do the fourth root of negative 16 and see what happens. So if we do four math, choose option 5. I want to choose option 5, so rather than scrolling down, I can just hit 5. And let's say I try to do negative 16. Okay, that's a non-real answer, right? The fourth root of a negative is not going to work. Let's look at that. If I tried to take the fourth root of negative 16 and think what that would be, then I'm asking myself what to the fourth power is negative 16? But anything to the fourth power, a positive or a negative to the fourth power, is going to end up being a positive. So there's no answer to this. Now, if it was an odd index like five, let's say I do the fifth root. Now I'm going to pick a number that's not nice, okay? That's not a perfect fifth. Let's write down the first few perfect fifths. One to the fifth power things. Two to the fifth, I think that's 32. Um, three to the fifth. I think that's 243. Let's check. Let's check. Second, let's quit. Um, 3 to the 5th. 243. Okay. So let's say I put some number under this that's not a perfect 5th power, like 100. What's the 5th root of 100? Well, I know the answer is going to be somewhere in here somewhere between 2 and 3. 2 point something. Let's check it out. So I can come over here and I can do 5, math, choose option 5, put 100 in there, and I get 2.511. Okay, so 2.51188. Now this is an irrational number that'll go on forever, so it's an approximation. We have a lot of decimals here, but this thing to the fifth power gives me a hundred. Now this is close to a hundred because it's rounded, right? This has more decimals. This answer has more decimals than what the calculator is showing, but 
That's what that means. This number to the fifth power is going to give me 100. All right, well, I hope that helps with um, dealing with different indices and expanding your knowledge of radicals from square roots to cubed roots, fourth roots, and beyond.